Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with coverage of round 2 of the 2017 Sinkfield Cup, which is part of the Grand Chess Tour. Round 2 saw the clash between world champion Magnus Carlsen and his challenger from November 2016, Sergei Karyakin. Let's have a look what happened in their game. Carlsen was white, Karyakin was black and it was played on the 3rd of August 2017. Knight f3 from the world champion, knight f6 from the last challenger, g3, c5, bishop g2, knight c6, Carlsen castled and e5. Now black is threatening to play d5 and play a reversed king's indian and Carlsen prevents that move with e4. Looks strange because can you not just take that pawn? You can, but if you do, there is rook e1 and white will regain the pawn. For example, knight f6, then knight takes e5. Black can also play d5, protecting the knight, but then simply d3, kicking the knight back, and knight takes e5. Karyakin chose not to take an e4, he played d6. It looks like a somewhat passive setup for black, but it is playable. d3, g6, a3, bishop g7, and c3. White is not really playing for d4, as the pressure against e4 makes that push very difficult to realize. Black castled, and Carlsen decided to play on the queen side with b4. If Karyakin would have taken that pawn, then a takes b4, and it looks, it looks nice for white, with extra space on the queen side and the open a file. Karyakin didn't take, he played a6. Knight bd2, b5, rook b1. And Karyakin played the knight back to d7. Many of my comments are based on what Grandmaster Jemolinski said about this game on the Internet Chess Club. And here Jemolinski criticized Karyakin for often going back in the opening. And he said here is he is blocking bishop c8. And he thought Karyakin could have played bishop e6 instead. Maybe he was afraid for knight g5. But then there is bishop g4, and if you kick that bishop, then it goes back all the way to c8, and white's setup looks somewhat awkward. According to Jamolinski, he cannot really combine play on both wings in this position. He has advanced on the queen side and is now also advancing on the king side with f3. He really wants to play f4, but that doesn't really rhyme with the advance already made on the queen side. Knight d7 was played in the game by Karyakin. Knight b3. Now Karyakin took on b4. A takes b4. Knight b6. Bishop e3. Bishop e6. That bishop has now come into the game. Queen d2. Rook c8. Rook fc1, rook e8, and Carlsen played h4. He sees he cannot get in c4 or d4 anytime soon and decides to probe on the other side of the board with black's knights far away from the king's side at this moment. Knight a4 from Karyakin, and now that c4 is possible. Carlsen plays it immediately. Afterwards he said that even after c4 he did not think he had an advantage. h5 from Karyakin and king h2. And we'll see later why king h2 was a very useful move. Bishop g4, c takes b5, a takes b5, knight a5. And if Karyakin would have taken that knight, then b takes e5 and that is good for white. He will get at the b5 pawn before black can get at the a5 pawn. 
and also knight a4 will find it difficult to return into the game. So Kayakin did not take on a5, he played knight d4. Afterwards he said that queen d7 would have been better, he said it was, would have been safer, and that he maybe should have exchanged some pieces that way. And that he played more principled with knight d4, but that it might have been a mistake. After knight d4, Carlsen took on c8, queen takes, and with rook c1, Carlsen gains control over the c-file. Queen d7, now Carlsen took on d4, and after e takes d4 he played bishop h6. Grandmaster Jamolinski explained that black will be very happy if he can keep his dark squared bishop and play knight c3. Then he will have a very solid good position. But it turns out he doesn't have the time for this. He played bishop h8, he doesn't want to swap the dark squared bishops, that would really weaken his king's position. With all the kingside pawns on light squares for black, he does not want to part with his dark squared bishop. Both players had around 15 minutes left in this position, we're only on move 25, with the time control being on move 40. If black would have played knight c3 instead of bishop h8, then white would have taken on g7, taking away that dark squared bishop, and black does not have knight e2 with a fork because he played that king to h2 seven moves ago. Did Carlsen foresee this variation when he played king h2 that there would be no knight e2? which meant black could not get his ideal set up with keeping the dark squared bishops and playing the knight to c3. He probably foresaw this. After bishop h8, Carlsen played rook c6. A great move. Knight c3 came now, but it is less effective as it does not shut down the white rook on c1. f3 from Carlsen. Kicking the bishop, bishop e6, and bishop f4, attacking the d6 pawn. With both rook and bishop, and it's only defended by the queen. So bishop e5 is forced. Bishop takes, d takes, and f4. Queen e7 from Karyakin. Good move, attacking the b4 pawn and also covering the g5 square in case of f5. And then after g takes f5, the white queen cannot come to g5 with tempo. That would have been a very strong move. Another idea instead of queen e7 would have been bishop g4. The idea is to support the knight coming from c3 to d1 to the strong square on e3. But Karyakin probably did not play this because of f5 and white's attack is strong. Black has problems with his g6 pawn and his bishop and knight are out of the game. Karyakin said afterwards that maybe he should, should have taken on f4 and after queen takes f4 he would have had a reasonable position. But he said I didn't have much time to figure out what I should do. He only had a few minutes left at this stage. After the move from the game, queen e7, Carlsen played rook c5, rook c8 from Karyakin, rook takes, bishop takes, and knight c6. That knight is now protecting the b4 pawn. So Karyakin cannot take on b4, he played queen d6. Knight takes e5, now Karyakin took on b4, and that b5 pawn looks very strong, that could become a big distraction for the white attack. f5 from Carlsen, and yes, that b-pawn will be a great asset for black in the end game, but we are not in the end game yet. White is still attacking black's king. Taking on f5 here is not good because of queen g5 check, king f8 and queen d8 check wins the bishop. Another move is e takes f5 with a winning attack. 
Sokoyakin after f5 played queen d6, knight f3, g takes f5, and Grandmaster Yermolinsky said that b5, b4 probably was black's last chance here, even though white still has the better chances. After g takes f5, Carlsen played queen g5 check, king h7, e5, queen went to g6, queen d8, bishop e6, knight g5 check, king g7, that was the 40th move, both players have made the time control, queen takes d4, taking an important pawn, hitting the knight, Knight went to a4, that knight is now completely out of the game. And after the move, knight g5 to h3, Karyakin resigns. It doesn't happen very often that white plays a knight to h3 and that black then resigns. Why did he resign? It looks premature, but it is not. There are really four reasons. One thing is the knight will come to f4 and is very strong there. It covers many crucial squares. Second reason in is that the b5 pawn is really not going anywhere with the queen on d4. The third reason is that white will combine attacking the black king with running with his d pawn. And the fourth reason is that white's king is very safe. Black does not have any counterplay against the white king. The engine is already on plus four for white. So Karyakin resigned and Carlsen wins his first game in the tournament. He has not won a classical event in 2017 and he really wants to win this one. The results of round two, Carlsen beat Karyakin, Nakamura and Vachela Gras played a draw. Aronian lost in a very long game to Caruana. Svitler and Anand made a draw and Wesley So came back from his loss in the first round and beat Jan Nepomnici with black. That's the Napomnici's second loss in two rounds. The standings, of course, it's early days. Three leaders of, with one and a half out of two. And Svitler with half a point and Napomnici with zero points at the bottom of the table. The third round will be played on Friday, August 4th. And I will tell you after the round what happened. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and please leave a comment. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You also may want to check out my Chess 2 Progress channel. The link is in the description box. This is Rick from Chess 2 Impress. Thank you for watching.